be honest, I don't think that logo is quite big enough. Okay, so as you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff that's <laughs> changed since the last time we uh, had this video. I think yeah. none of this was here. Let's have a look around. So first off, we have this wonderful piece of wall artwork that we uh, spent a bit of time painting onto yeah. the wall. So this is painted directly onto the wall here. <laughs> and we did spend a bit of time making that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, also at the same time, last week we uh, set up all the sh first of all, we set up all the shelving on the back there. Uh, my storage at the back as well. Mm -hmm. uh, have a filtered water system installed so that we have now constant access to filtered water in order to brew some beautiful teas. And also, finally, we have received a counter. A custom counter. This thing, the thing that we've been waiting for all these uh, all these weeks, is finally here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a it's a beautiful piece of furniture. Here. Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, so, it's a bit of a small shop, but uh, we'll take you on a bit of a tour. craftsmanship whether it's hand painted signage or something like a custom, custom built counter, counter? Yeah. Uh, and even to our teas and tea wares uh, that we that we stock if there's one thing that we really do appreciate and we really do enjoy it's yeah. quality craftsmanship there's just like a certain intangible quality to something that's been you know handcrafted that I don't know, I find it really hard to explain. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the feel. Yeah. It, it feels different yeah. between handmade and machine made. For example, yeah, so in something like tea, although you may not instantly be able to taste the differences, mm. you can definitely feel it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Take this counter for example. Um, it might look like any other counter, but it's completely custom, made from scratch. Um, just the top here, it's made from recycled hardwood. It's solid. Dirty. Listen to that. Listen to how it's really solid. Right. You can't really make any sound. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the top itself it weighs about 120 kilos. Just yeah. this top here. So when choosing the top, there are so many different options. Yeah. Uh, we could have just um, gone to a very cheap uh, version of it. it. It might look very similar, but the feels of it, it feels completely different. Yeah. So at the very beginning, there, there's an option that we can um, go was choose a, uh, the timber, still like recycled timber, but it wasn't hardwood, it was um, softwood. But there was a lot more options with that, with that particular piece of wood. Yeah. And you know, the, um, the guy who was making the counter said you know, he can make, like basically create the sort of rough natural patterns that we wanted. Yeah. Um, and to get that sort of really rustic wood look yeah. that we definitely like that we really liked but the thing is when we felt um, I guess when we touched that wood like the texture the feel of it it, it, it didn't feel as good as this one. yeah I mean there was definitely a feel and a quality to this particular yeah. uh, recycled hardwood top mm -hmm. that we really loved that it, we just could not get with the other one. When we were making that decision, we kind of sacrificed a little bit of the aesthetics yeah. and the look mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we have something that felt even better. Quality yeah. is the most important for us. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, a, and as I was saying, that. with craftsmanship, like just the feel <laughs> of this, I, like, I don't know how I can, we can portray this feel <laughs> to you guys out there, but it just feels, feels good. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> amazing. And the same goes with our teeth as well. Yeah. Uh, when we come across, like, 
I guess, producers and craftsmen mm-hmm. who put a lot of time and effort into not only like learning their crafts, practicing it, and then creating beautiful products like this tea that we have here. Uh, this is what's this is an old tree red yeah. that we just Wushu recently Hong Cha yep. from Yunnan. Yeah, that we just recently got in, and it's an absolutely beautiful uh, red tea. I find that we're generally drawn to these independent producers and independent farmers, and we find that a lot of their teas just they take on a bit of you know more character and qualities that yeah. we, we just can't find. Uh, in the, from the bigger factories, and mm-hmm. I mean, these qualities often go. I feel they go beyond just taste and flavor. Mm. You know, it's not just like oh, you know, these teas taste the same or they taste a little bit different. There's just yeah, and, and, as I was saying before, that sort of intangible quality, that feeling, almost yeah, that yeah, really goes beyond just taste and flavor. Yeah, definitely. And um, Yixin Teapot is another example. Many are mass produced and mach- uh, machine made. You might not tell the di- uh, difference at the very beginning, but as we said, like the feeling, uh, the feels of it is definitely different. There are a lot of quality go into the handmade teapot. That's something um, machine made just can't replicate that. Yep. And also the quality of the clay, it will be much, much different. So, so people won't use good quality clay to, to machine made a teapot so any good quality clay they will just like use by a handmade pot yep and the quality of the clay you really can't tell unless you're feeling it you and you're use it while, while you use yes, it as well, as well yeah. yeah so the glaze and you know everything will develop while you're using it yeah mm-hmm. maybe it's because we do get to know these um, these craftsmen you know, behind the tea, the, the, the people behind the, the teapot, teapot with yeah. their families, understand you know the, the practices and the hard work, the, hard work, the training yeah. that goes into being able to make all this. Like maybe that helps us to really appreciate um, yeah. the final product. And for us, yeah, we can we can definitely taste it and feel, feel it, it. <laughs> in, the, in, in the end product. And you can appreciate it yeah. as well. Yeah, but the the thing that I guess all of these things have in common, whether it's traditional tea making, traditional, even traditional teapot making, or even uh, hand painted signage. Yeah. A lot of these, um, a lot of these more, I guess, traditional craftsman like industries, unfortunately, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a dying industry. Yeah. yeah. So Darren, the sign writer um, who did the hand painted sign for us, yep. told us that um, the industry of uh, hand painted sign is actually dying. So not many people ask for hand painted sign anymore this day. He yeah. said like everything just digital and no one can appreciate it. So it actually takes a lot of skills to get to the level of expertise. So he told me that he studied this as a teenager. So he studied for around three years and after that and after that um, did an apprenticeship for four years yeah. and then he can actually you know, be a the, pro. Did, yeah. Be a pro and did the job. Yeah. And since then, he's been doing that for what, like fifty years or yeah. so. When I when I you know contacted this like sign writers, uh, a lot I, I just noticed that a lot of them are older generation. Yeah. There are not many younger ge- generation do doing this kind of job. Yeah. And I guess a similar thing is happening with the uh, with the tea industry in, yeah. in China as well. So a lot of these handcrafted qualities are slowly. Um, being lost, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, because you know it yeah. is hard work. It's hard work. It's so there, there are multiple reasons. Um, so the parents don't want. So the parents obviously want their children to have a better life. Mm-hmm. So because they've been working so many years yep. and they know how hard it is to actually make mm-hmm. make tea. Yeah. So they want the children maybe do something else. Yep, to go out. To go out. Get an education, yeah. like a university education, and to open up opportunities that they themselves never had. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. They had a lot of these farmers like basically had no choice. Mm. Right, they were born into a family like uh, born into a tea family, and there was no, I guess, not many options. No, so for them. yeah, no. That's that. That tea is the only kind of living. Yeah, it was the only way that they can make a living <laughs> and support you know their family. A lot of a lot of these older farmers like they, they specifically said to us they don't want that they don't want their children to, to uh, get into this business because it's super hard work and they mm. want better for their kids. Yeah. Which 
it's a sad, it's a sad thing. It's, yeah, <laughs> because there's so much hard work, there's so much beauty in the products they create. Mm -hmm. Like they, I mean, a lot of times, a lot of these farmers tend to, I, I feel, they tend to undervalue what they what they provide. Yeah, and, you know, they, they they always see it's like, oh, it's not a great industry. It's not something yeah. that's prestigious. So they they only see themselves as a farmer. Yeah, but. We actually see them not only a farmer. I see them no. as a producer and an expert. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a master. Yeah, they are true master. Because they've been doing this for decades. Um, they understand these things that just mm. like that comes naturally to them. Yeah, you know, and but they're not just. And for me, like they're not just tea producers. Well, they're people who are holding onto a tradition. Yeah, like, and I think it's a it's a tradition that's worth keeping. Like that's worth keeping going. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, you know, it's worth. Um, maintaining as well. Yeah. Um, that's gone on for decades, generations, centuries. Yeah. You know, all these production mm -hmm. methods, and it would be a really big shame if uh, you know, due to modernization and you know, these big, you know, thing. I guess people not valuing these types of things that this traditional way method of making tea is like. I mean, it'll be a real big shame if it, if it disappears. You know, yeah. In, in the next few decades or over the next two or three generations. Yeah. So we really want to try our best to support them, yeah. um, you know, to keep this tradition continue on. Definitely. You know? there, there is hope, like there yeah, is good science, like there are... Generation, some generation, yeah. new school... Yeah, there are producers. a lot of new school producers, I guess, who don't come from tea families, but who really do, like us, like really appreciate the types of quality, you know, handmade, Quality tea that mm. these farmers can produce, and what yeah. they and what they're doing is they're they're, they're studying, getting yeah. you know getting degrees, getting educated about not just tea making but agriculture and, and that yeah. kind of thing, and then going out and trying to make tea themselves, yeah. um, bringing in sort of new school ways of thinking, mm -hmm. but then also learning from like yeah. these yeah. farmers as Older well, generations. like yeah. and mm. constantly learning from them, understand getting their you know, trying to understand the benefits of you know, their decades and years of experience and then sort of ma marrying that up with you know, theory and science and all that kind of stuff to mm -hmm. hopefully keep, uh, keep this tradition going yeah. uh, but not resorting to being like big massive factories mm -hmm. either like these people are there, although they're, they're thinking science as well they're not you know, thinking big production, mass yeah. produced factories so there is hope that this tradition <laughs> of tea making yep. will hopefully continue on in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so that's it from us today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We still have a little bit to do uh, to get this shop ready. We, we still need to do the shelving for display yep. our products. Yeah, we basically have very, not much space to display products now, so we, we are, yeah, we need to do shelving. Yeah, um, but it is like counting down to the day of our opening. Yeah, we're pretty close now. Uh, yeah. Just a few extra touches, I mm -hmm. think, before I think we before we're ready to open up. So yeah. counting down, it's just days away now. So uh, hopefully everything goes well, and uh, yeah. yeah, we'll be ready to open in well pretty soon. Pretty soon. And we'll have our <laughs> first official shop ready to go. Yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. Super exciting, but we've still got a lot of work to do, so we better get back to it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.